Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games, and welcome back to part 26 of my United States of America campaign here in Hearts of Iron 4, The New Order. Let's just keep going right into it. So right now, we're going through a de uh, process. process. Uh, so what we're going to try to do now is we're going to try to get rid of these gerrymandered maps from the south. I don't think we're going to be able to hold the south anyway. Um, you know, I just realized, I don't think they said what the electoral vote count was in 68. Don't they usually do that? Hmm, that's unfortunate. Uh, so we're doing that. Let's solidify the... There's no reason to do this. Force stability, lose 100 political power to solidify us in the northern states where we're already pretty solid. There's no need... Like, it was bribery. He jumped the line of succession. Maybe it was more specific about what this would entail or if there was going to be an event. I would actually care. Um, but I don't. So we're just going to go ahead and define normal. Um... <clears throat> Uh, things are beginning to calm down. The 60s have without a doubt been a decade of scandal, change, and chaos. Slaughterhouse 5. Ah, good old Kurt Vonnehue. He's got some interesting stuff. I recommend Breakfast of Champions. Um, yeah. So I guess I should actually read this. Um, so what you got to understand is that Vonnehue actually was at the bombing, you know, he, he witnessed Allied bombing during World War II, and it became like the, the seminal moment of his life. Uh, the book's protagonist, Billy Pilgrim, is captured by the Wehrmacht during the defense of Scotland and is held in a slot. Oh, yeah, because World War II was different in this world. Um, <clears throat> was captured by the Wehrmacht during the defense of Scotland and is held in a slaughterhouse in southeast London. Billy is a poorly trained soldier who has come to dislike war, refusing to fight for his country. During an Allied bombing of the city, his acquaintance and fellow soldier, Roland Weary, dies of infection, and shortly before his demise, he blames his death on Billy. Billy escapes the slaughterhouse, and the novel proceeds to his near-death experience in a plane crash where he was abducted by aliens. These aliens, the Truffamaldorians, taught Billy the, their outlook on life, death, and fate, causing Billy to become an orator. Critics condemned the disorderly structure of the book, but praised its clear anti-war message. Many readers appreciated the way Vonnet included his own war experiences in the novel, quickly making the book a bestseller. The book itself was printed in multiple European languages, but it was banned throughout Europe shortly after its publication. Through the book's anti-war message, one can see Vonnet Hughes disdain for the Reich and the Japanese. And so it goes. Indeed. Uh, okay, what, what, what is it that we're trying to talk to the Democrats about? Or, um... Not talk with the Democrats, but like, what, 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 what's going on here? The Fair Restribution, Redistribution and Elections Act. Okay, so this is basically getting rid of the gerrymandering. Right now we've got 29 of the Republicans behind this bill. We've got 32 of the center of the NPP. Nobody in the far right is in, in favor of the bill, and we can't compromise with them. Who would have thought? Um, so this is kind of funny. Like, we can only negotiate with the Democrats because everybody else is either completely for or completely against it. Well, guess what? We don't need no stinking donkeys. We're going to pass this just fine. <clears throat> so what's this chaos on the select committee? The Senate Select Committee to assess the legacy of the Kennedy and Thurman administrations was bipartisan by design, with committee seats being given to the far right and center blocks as well as the RDs. Okay, so that's plural seats to the far right. So what, two of the three senators are on this committee? Um... This is stalling any effort at progress. Right from the get-go, there's an uproar among the far-right members when Senator Maureen Newberger motioned to invite Reverend Jesse Jackson to deliver the chaplain's opening benediction. Senator Robert Byrd denounced the motion as political prostering. Segregation is good to come. So they're just bickering. They're bickering. They're bickering. Um... They're under, yeah, they're just saying, you're trying to undermine Kennedy's legacy. Well, your president was a segregationist and uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, Senator Pepper then sarcastically asked if Byrd was grateful to Kurt Saxon for giving Thurman the chance to do so. <laughs> Byrd and Russell got out of their seats and ne nearly came to blows with Pepper before Senate security restrained them. At this point, the Senate committee decided to adjourn early before any benediction could be delivered. God bless America indeed. Okay. So, what is this? Let it go... Uh, there's people who stand with him. There are many who will cry. No, we're not doing that. Uh, corrupt bargain. What is this? <clears throat> there is one big question about Thurman's presidency that remains unanswered. Why did the Speaker of the House so resolutely refuse the position? The man in question has until now remained quiet on the matter, insisting that he simply couldn't handle, could not handle the burdens of power. 
However, shocking evidence has come to light that suggests a more sinister reason the Speaker was threatened by Thurman himself so he could secure the presidency. This, combined with Thurman's other acts of dubious legality, cannot be allowed to stand. We must launch a full investigation of Thurman's activities to uncover any wrongdoing and subversion of the law. And if he is found guilty, he must be punished accordingly. This will make us many enemies among the segregationists, but in the interests of American dignity, we must remind everybody that nobody, not even a former president, is above law. Are we going to throw Thurman in jail? So the Republican Democrats, we're going to suffer in the South. Just screw it. Screw it. I can't say this enough. Like, we're just abandoning the South. There's plenty of other states, plenty of other electoral votes out there in the world. Or the country, I should say. America is the world. Every country in the world belongs to America. <laughs> I'm sure that's from Yu Gi Oh! Bridge, if y'all don't recognize the reference. It's been a while. Like that line where Keith Bandit goes, like, I want you out of my country by midnight, <laughs> even though they're in Japan. Um. <laughs> So there's an investigation. It's going to focus on blackmail and corruption charges, his conduct in office. Public reaction has mostly been positive, though the segregationists are predictably up in arms. Whatever. More concerningly, many within our own party have expressed worry over the implications of this investigation. Thurman still enjoys a lot of support in the South and other pro-segregationist counties across the nation. Prosecuting Thurman will enrage them even further and seriously harm our polling prospects in his supporter states. Who cares? We have to allocate funding and resources to the investigation. While many agree that Thurman deserves justice, some party insiders argue that a small, quiet investigation that will likely turn up nothing will be best to avoid rocking the boat and causing yet more disorder. While still placating those who want to see the man investigated, others insist that we put in enough resources to secure at least some of the charges against him, or even to push for the fullest extent of the law. Do we play the pragmatists or the side of justice? Uh, okay, so it's, it's literal money we're allocating. So if we keep it quiet and safe, it will guarantee the failure. It'll avoid angering conservatives. We could be certain a proper investigation will go through if we do thirty million political, uh, thirty million money and thirty political power, or at the cost of um, sixty million, we can guarantee that all the crimes will come to light. Come on, let's see what the cat dragged in and smell it. Uh, I think I might have gotten that phrase wrong, that turn of phrase. Anyway, so do we want to just go ahead and do Dream Lives On? Yeah. <clears throat> um, President Kennedy was swept into power in the hopes of putting an end to the civil rights crisis, and for a brief period he succeeded, uh, only for his tragic death to open the door for Thurman to come in and rip his work to shreds, reopening the wounds and dividing America even further. We must restore Kennedy's vision after it was so viciously tarnished. Our new civil rights legislation will undo the damage done by Thurman and his clique. This will no doubt infuriate the remaining segregationists, but after their attempted subversion of American democracy, few others are likely to mind a sun lighting them. Yeah, so... We'll be stronger. I think this is backwards. It says we're going to get better in the South. Oh, because there is a black vote in the South. That's probably what that means. But then why would it get worse in the North? Strike a balance. Yeah, this must be, I think they just made a little screw up here, which, you know, there's got to be thousands and thousands of these focuses and events and all sorts of things to, 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 to track. But yeah, I think this was a little mistake they did, as long as our upcoming civil rights legislation is stronger. But, you know, I'm just going to interpret it as it gets better in the South because we are going to make it once again easier for black people to vote. Because that's right. We, 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 need to, we need to try to get back uh, the supporting of the disenfranchised because that's going to give us stability, although it will hurt our political power game. The dream lives on. The Fair Redistribution and Elections Act passes. Gosh, can you imagine if I, if Bobby Kennedy had had this kind of senatorial support? Um, probably wouldn't be dead right now. Who knows? Or maybe he still would have. It just takes one crazy Klansman. Um, so the new law makes it illegal to cre create congressional districts that are designed to nullify or suppress the voting rights of minorities, voters of certain political parties, and other identical groups identifiable groups across the nation, though it is undoubtedly focused on the recently exposed cases in the Deep South pushed by former President Strom Thurmond. Furthermore, some of the most extreme examples in states like Alabama and Mississippi will have new districts created, overseen by nonpartisan judges, to prevent such flagrant disregard for the spirit of democratic elections. Support for the bill is high across the nation. Only opposition is in the southern states. They're calling it Yankee tyranny. Whatever. We are getting closer to true equality. The grip the NPPFR holds on the South is diminished. Northern progressives applaud the end of this injustice. So with some luck, when we get to the 1970 senatorial elections, there will be no more um, far-right NPP. 
Let's finalize this language. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we could finally put an end to the strife of the Thurman reign. We must draft up the legislation we intend to introduce. Clarifying the wording of the bill will make its intentions clear and should help smooth its passage through to the president's desks. Uh, the final result might turn out stronger or weaker than anticipated, depending on the precedent we have set so far, and certain people might appreciate or take issue with what comes out of the other end. Let's see. We're almost as strong as the Democrats again. We're up to 33%, so that's good. Gus Hall is losing power. All right, time for the new Voting Rights Act. A bill for undoing Thurman's segregationist policies will be introduced. Voting shall commence in three weeks' time, which is, I think, more than enough time before the uh, the act thing. Yeah, that's 21 days plus the seven, really, but we've got 88 days. More than enough time. We're going to be just fine, and then we can start figuring out what we're going to do here. Um, President Thurman sought to end the march to racial equality. We rebuff this blatant attempt on American democracy and honor the legacy of President Kennedy. Uh, most pollsters agree that after the dark days of Thurman, this bill will face few obstacles and is almost certain to pass, and soon we can finally move forwards into a future of our own. Okay, let's actually take a look, though, at um, <clears throat> what the Voting Rights Act says. Uh, the top goal of the Glenn administration is to restore justice and dignity to black Americans through a new Voting Rights Act. It will restore many of the civil rights. Yeah, so we have all the Republicans. We have all the center. We have only a few Democrats. Yeah, we don't We don't even need the Democrats. Really, we should be like the... <laughs> although it would be kind of long. We're more like the Republican National... You know, so we're like the... Right now, we're the RNPPC <laughs> party. The Democrats are kind of on the outside. Which is... Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, we've effectively formed a coalition with the Social Democrats, uh, which is more than enough to put us over 50%, incidentally. That's fun. That's really fun. Okay. Um, let's figure out what... Yeah, so we're done there. That part of the tree is gone. Let's let's figure out what our options are here. So we can appease the party. We can support the space program. It's very good, but we have to be realistic. Uh, the CNPP wants social programs, the far right wants a more defense budget, whatever. And the Democrats are saying we should spend less. We can start things on the right foot by giving our allies the people they want and the positions they want. It might not be ideal, but giving out a few favors will get us a lot more in return in the future and keep the Democrats quiet for now. Okay, alternatively, we can bring in the technocrats, scientists, engineers, mathematicians, all sorts of experts. Who cares that they have no political connections? Cronyanism and corruption is how we got Nixon and nearly broke the party. Congress may complain, but we can appease them easily enough, and this will ultimately lead to a stronger support staff in the future. Uh, we're already fighting for second in the move race, and we cannot... And we cannot rise to meet the challenges on the backs of the political appointees. New decisions to fund NASA will be unlocked. Gets event. Glenn looking above and beyond. Yeah, we're going to do this. We don't need the Democrats. We have the Social Democrats, which admittedly we'd have an even larger share later. Oh, cool. And a Supreme Court justice just died. Now, we're not going to throw a party, but we are going to smile. Uh, so I figure we got to go liberal, right? Yeah, we got to get Strom Thurmond's people out. What What is it composed of now, the Supreme Court? It's five conservatives, four liberals. We just got the swing vote, people. Or at least we will once we get the pop-up. Yep, legacy is done. Broken arrow, the sum of all fears. Uh-oh. 40 minutes ago, a B-52 strato fortress on a standard airborne alert patrol out of Naval Air Force Selfos in Iceland radioed a distress signal and accompanying encrypted message. The message indicated that the air... Craft's vertical stabilizer had partially broken off, and the crew would be forced to ditch into the Norwegian Sea. Aboard the aircraft was one Mark 28 thermonuclear weapon, and as such, this incident is being classified as Broken Arrow. There is a loose nuclear bomb out there. Given known weather conditions and established USAF safety protocols, we believe that the crew is most likely alive and floating approximately 115 miles to the southwest of, of Jan Mayen Island. The wreckage of their craft and potentially the accompanying weapon would most likely still be visible from the air. There are no indications that the German military is presently aware of the situation. But given known German radar capabilities, it is overwhelmingly likely that this will not be the case within 24 hours' time. We recommend that relevant Navy and Air Force elements be immediately tasked to rescue and retrieval operations. So ordered. Hmm. Things are good. Things are heating up. Um, okay, yeah, so clearly I had the timeline wrong. 
The Germans send a flotilla. For photographs from our reconnaissance air flights, the Kriegsmarine has dispatched a, fl dispatched a sizable flotilla of minesweeper submarine rescue ships and even cruisers to the approximate location of the downed B-52. Additionally, Luftwaffe aircraft have been detected in the Norwegian Sea by multiple Iceland-based radar stations. We believe that they have detected the B-52's crash and intend to salvage the wreckage and the nuclear weapon along with any survivors. This is an absolutely critical threat to our national security and technological capabilities. However, we can stop this. The CIA possesses certain back channels within the German government. We advise that a secret message be sent to German leadership at once, demanding that they halt the flotilla so we can rescue the crew. To do otherwise would be a blow to our national security and prestige, although it may decrease tensions. What should we do? Uh, diplomatic crisis can escalate. We can tell them to back off or we can take the hit. Mm, let's tell them to back off. Political power is also nice. B b b back the f off, b b baka. See, I don't know this guy. I don't know this Ferdinand Sh Shortener. He doesn't even have a focus tree. Oh, so it has begun. The Far Eastern Imperial Realm declares war on Central Siberian Republic. Interesting news has landed on the president's desk this morning. After years of preparation for regional level states, the Central Siberian Republic in the Central Siberian region and the Far Eastern Imperial Realm and the Russian Far East have declared war on another. The outcome of this war will most likely determine the successor of one half of the former Soviet Union and as such is of great importance that we support the state which would be friendlier to America and the OFN. While we see many potential ends for each different country, advisors are suggesting a course of action be taken soon in order to best improve our chances of making a difference in the conflict. The director of the CIA has asserted to the president that their men are standing by and have a multitude of options to assist each nation. Whatever the case is, the president eventually stands up, clears his throat, and makes a decision. I know they say there, it's because it could potentially could have been a woman right now. Let them fight. Uh, we probably should actually get our support behind the Central Siberian Republic. They are the actual Democrats. Uh, yeah. And don't, I don't want to hear it from y'all. So you can't decide who to pick. It's because I'm different presidential administrations as it goes. You know you love it. Uh, according to keyhole satellite data and our radar stations in Iceland, the Luftwaffe and Kriegsmarine assets that the Germans had been moving into the Norwegian Sea have withdrawn. It is clear from this information that the German government has acceded to our demand and that they do not intend on intercepting our own rescue and salvage operations. Evidently, they were intimidated by our resolve and did not wish to escalate the situation. Our combined Navy and Air Force task force is still en route to the crash site. With any luck, all personnel involved will be safe at home within the next 48 to 72 hours. Excellent work, everyone, and we have grown more unified. Is the unification the thing that's directly connected to the whole ray of hope or malaise thing? I just wish that was more clear. It's probably something down here. Heck, you guys have probably been trying to tell me in the comments section for like 10 episodes or something. So let us cross into the new frontier. <clears throat> we are a nation founded by explorers and pioneers. Excuse me. A nation that lost its way amidst the troubled times. To defeat the evils of fascism, we must show the world that democracy is the way of the future, a stable bedrock upon which mankind will make its way to the stars. Uh, let's see, our journey will not be an easy one, but such is the nature of exploration. President Glenn shall lead our nation our, and our species into a brave new world. Oh, that has such things in it. Um, yeah. Glenn, looking above and beyond. Uh, he's going to unite the country after the division. There's no official statements. Many White House reports show a continuous focus towards the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, with recent actions in the West Wing allowing for nearly double the staff held in NASA before, as well as stark increases towards the program's funding. Furthermore, many analysts have noticed a steady increase in ties to such activities within the congressional branch as well. It has been noted that President Glenn's administration has not given any public attention towards recent events as the only willing, uh, only official willing to give a statement was Howard Metzelbaum, the president's chief of staff, who said, The president promised Americans the possibility of growth and prosperity in manners they have not seen before, and the administration is working diligently in an effort to ensure this happens. Do they not see us trying? So it's just, that was kind of a strange event. I'm not sure what the point of that was. So these two are at war. Let's kind of take a look at the situation here. So the Central Siberians definitely have more factories uh, and more divisions. Uh, we are going to send a little bit of help that way. We do have that CIA budget to spend after all. So let's send some help to the Central Siberians. Wait, no, no. Organized troops. American assisted military uh, drilling. That could be good. 
That could be good. Let's do that. Because the thing is, um, we're also going to send a war shipment to them. The arsenal of democracy. Uh, the, 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 the Far Eastern Imperial Realm has jets and helicopters because Thurman sent him them, sent them there. Uh, so that's, uh, that's gonna be something to deal with. Okay, so, um, what's going on? What else is going on right now, though? We've got all of our CIA stuff, State of NASA. Uh, we can raise the spending cap. It'll boost the popularity of conservative... Democracy, that's the Democrats. Um, political landscape. See, the thing is, we're not doing anything right now. So I don't see the point in increasing the state of NASA. So tell you what, what we're going to do is... Uh, oh, should we increase our unity? Um, we're already voting together, working together well. There's not really any unity that needs to be boosted. So let's, let's take a minute here to figure out what it is we're going to do. I'm also noticing that these two things are connected. That's interesting. So we can kind of skip something here. If we do Pathway to the Sky, we can go right over here. But we're going to need Power of the Atom anyway. Okay, whatever. Um, so the dream never died. Mission control decisions allow us to launch space programs. will be unlocked. Uh, work will begin on pension reform. <clears throat> this will raise our public support. Then we have the Padam... Power of the Atom, which will also increase our public support. Both taxpayers and military expect to see benefits from this. We'll get the National Spirit Nuclear Development Program, which means nuclear reactor construction speed will increase by 5%. I'm so glad they've mentioned that. Because, uh, okay. Yeah. Why do we not have... Oh, the ports in Los Angeles! Yeah, right. We have, to, we, have to up, we have to bring their infrastructure up to speed. Let's do that and that. Let's also um, increase the construction budget a little bit. Let's bring down the military spending. Add the civilian spending while we're at it, actually. Dang it, we're still suffering a deficit. Shoot. So we're going to start getting rid of our liquid reserves here in a minute. I'm going to go with the liberal option. Uh, infantry weapon improvements are done. Okay. God, I wish we could get off the civilian economy. Um, I don't even know what to do. Just whatever. Click something. Um, <clears throat> so we could raise the spending cap of NASA. I think what we want to do maybe is we could do the Dream Never Died so we can start launching space program missions. I want to start doing that so that we can then uh, work get research points and work on the Jet Propulsion Lab some more. But after that, we might need to go in other directions. What we're probably going to end up doing is, is flipping between these three kind of frequently because um, like this is going to help raise public support so maybe if people are getting annoyed with nasa well then we say hey look though we're doing this nuclear power stuff we shall have it all uh euros program unmanned missions giving us an increase to war support as well as buffs to both rocket construction and air range will be unlocked pilot reactors our costs will increase Ooh, don't like that but that's how it is isn't it civil war in yemen has begun Hmm, appeal of the atom. Uh, oh, so we recruit Disney to basically make cartoons so people can understand um, understand the concepts NASA's doing. That's kind of like uh, that whole South American friendship thing Disney did. You know, you know the Three Caballeros and Saludos Amigos and all those movies. Not one failure more. A thunderous storm, great flashes of lightning, booming cannons of thunder. There, John Glenn slept soudly, warm by the covers of the bed, and his loving Anna in the dark room he called home throughout his presidency. Hmm. Round Fower Ain, Sway and Dre hitting the surface now, Colner said as the craft touched down upon the gray wasteland with a great blue and green sphere. Wait. Wait, what? Oh, no, oh, so so he's, like, dreaming of when the Germans landed on the moon? Uh, Kolner said as the craft touched down upon the gray wasteland with a great blue and green sphere floating, floated thousands upon thousands of miles behind them. Honored 
By his leadership, Kolner was declared to be the first to take the first step, and thus the proud German floated softly to the surface of the moon. He turned to grab something out of the landing craft and walked forward several places. For Germania, to the stars and beyond, he said as he planted the flag adorned with a black swastika to forever stare back at his home planet. There, millions of Germans celebrated across the Reich, taking part in a celebration to honor the glory, the wonder, the majesty of the Reich's power. Across the seas, however, Americans within the capital were devastated by the events of the past few hours. Men and women stood crying into one another's shoulders. Project leads cursed and kicked, going so far as vandalizing their workstations in anger. Hours felt like days, and with every passing moment, the repercussions of their failure became apparent. Projects were left in dark room shelves. Workers were leaving far earlier than they were scheduled to. And new reports of budget slashes came with every passing hour. Tears stained the one successful organization's pride. <clears throat> John, are you all right? Anna said as she shook her husband. The president rocketed back up within his bed and as cold streams of sweat worried down his forehead, burning his eyes. He looked at his wife's worried expression as he wiped away the sweat, thinking about everything that had transpired within his dreams. The president realized what had happened and did the only logical action in his mind next. He gave a long embrace to his wife. We won't fail again, Annie. Did you guys ever see that footage of the head of, um, I'm forgetting its name, basically India's NASA, but crying when the when their probe to the moon crashed? They got a lot else done on that trip, but that had to suck. Okay, so we're going to do The Dream Never Died. I think after that, uh, that event, we kind of have to. NASA these days is a sad shell of what it used to be during the glorious days where we won the race into orbit. Funding is all but dried up, and the majority of its facilities are already decrepit after years of neglect. The German victory broke America's will to continue the space race, but not NASA. The few employees left from the early days still believe in its founding vision, and are ready to do the hard work of bringing NASA back to its full capability. We have not forgotten how the Nazis sullied the lunar landscape with the swastika in 1962, and we will not forget our unfinished business on the moon. It's time to catch up in the race for the stars. Okay, so men over machines. This is interesting, interesting. So... We could do expanding unmanned mission stuff where we can make sure we put men into space. Oh, we're putting men up there. We need astronauts. Can you see here's what we do? We make new astronauts. They become popular. Then they run for Senate. And then we're going to create the space party. Kakaku Dori, baby. Oh, there we go. Uh, Beach Boy Associates. Uh, yep, Charles Manson was charged with first-degree murder. At Manson, a self-proclaimed guru with delusions of grandeur and a history of violent sex crimes, met Terry Mulcher after a chance encounter with Beach Boys member Dennis Wilson. Wilson, hoping to aid Manson's dream of becoming a published folk musician, introduced him to Melcher, but they had a falling out due to Manson's violent and erratic behavior. Um, yeah, his cult of followers, quickly known as the colloquially known as his family, earlier caught the FBI's attention for their leader's support of Francis Parser Yoki and preaching a bizarre synthesis of messianic apocalypticism and white supremacy. When questions of his beliefs motivated the crime, Manson claimed that the murders were all personal and unrelated to his plans to wake the world. His prophesied race war with his name taken from a Beach Boys song. According to Manson, Wilson adapted the lyrics to his song Cease to Exist without crediting him and deserved retribution. <clears throat> It's like, look, I'm all for white supremacy. I'm all for, you know, the apocalypse. But I killed these guys because they were assholes. <laughs> uh, court date is set and a conviction is all but guaranteed due to band member Mike Love's agreement to testify after emerging from a coma last week. Love also announced that he and bandmates Carl Wilson, Al Jarden, and Bruce Johnson unanimously agreed to dissolve the band out of respect to Brian Dennis's memory. Thank God they caught him. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, I'll sing the rest of it in a second. Stonewall. There was a blackout, and bartenders reached for panic buttons as they tried to calm their customers. Four undercover cops cursed as they fiddled with the switches, and the lights flicker back to life. The few who realize what is about to happen begin pushing their way through the crowd, but the moral squad have already locked down the window exits and are marching through the doors, flashlights in hand, as they bust the biggest gay establishment in New York. <clears throat> The raid doesn't meet with a receptive crowd, to say the least, as officers lead those in women's clothing to the toilets. Many resist. It's common knowledge that those who get arrested by the moral squad as cross-dressing men don't make it out without bruises, spit, drenched faces, manhandling. Men with faces lean and caked with makeup wrestle with their cuffs and spit on their captors. None of the bar's patrons have made it this far in the world, which mostly despises them without getting a little rough around the edges. And when the man pushes them around, they push right back. 
By the time the raid concludes, 150 people are under arrest, but more gathering in the late night darkness of the Big Apple, and a storm is brewing that cannot be contained. Just a routine raid, carry on. <laughs> Definitely will not explode in a riot. For sure. For sure. Nothing will happen. It's it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay, we're gonna soon be able to get some like other stuff here. I guess what's I don't know. Research the helis or something. Where was I? Oh yeah, we were talking Manson, so I ain't a politician. I'm just a bad musician. What you gonna do for me? Oh, here we go. The largest LGBT riot in the history of the United States begins with a logistics problem. <clears throat> the Morals Police have grabbed 28 cases of beer and 19 kegs of hard liquor. Do they sell liquor in kegs? Um, I've never heard of that. Uh, but with the patrol, like, I guess you could buy a barrel. Um, but with the patrol vans occupied elsewhere, they have nowhere to put it. Instead, they keep the patrons on lockdown as the wagons arrive, far too slowly for a police operation. The patrons, of course, are understandably upset, and those few not under arrest quickly join the growing crowds gathered outside the building. Many of them know that once the inn dies, so too does the living, breathing heart of gay culture in the greatest city in the world. They have everything to lose. Plus, they took our alcohol! The real crime! <laughs> the real oppression! <laughs> uh, so, Mafia members and patrons are loaded out of the wagons. A lone voice breaks out. We shall overcome. A protest song written for the South American War finds receptive ears in another angry crowd facing another unwinnable fight. Growing cheers, growling, shouts of gay power echo from the crowds which have swelled to bursting in the streets. Storm de la Vierre falls to the floor struggling against four officers and all hell breaks loose. Records are unclear what exactly happens next. In a wave of anger, the mob pushes over police wagons, hurls bricks at the officers retreating into Stonewall, presses garbage against the broken windows. Many of the most repressed members of the gay community lead the riot, the drag queens and the street boys leading a wild, wild charge. Sylvia Rivera, notable drag queen, will remember it as the greatest night of her life. The doors of the inn are broken open with a battering ram. Officers inside prepare for a fiery last stand. And then the police trucks arrive, fuel to the fire. So is this going to be like harsher than in real life? Or is there going to be a body count? The initial reaction is one of rage. Officer, oh, insurrection in Oman. Officers bloody and coated with garbage and in Rick with violence. And the fairies did it. The fairies! Violence explodes on the streets as police officers take the law into their own hand and hammer their rage into the defenseless. The mob arrayed against them is far too far gone to care. They form the rough outline of a cabaret chorus line and begin to sing. Their voices are piercing in the late night and the police have had enough of being needled. They rush the line. Men and women get hammered with nightsticks as bedlam spreads to the surrounding streets. Crowds crowd around police officers laughing gaily like warriors in the night of and then the light of burning cars. By the time the riots come to a halt, Christopher Street is blocked, half the cars on it are overturned, and every garbage can for a mile around has been emptied into the street. Witnesses describe an odd beauty to the refuse-strewn street, like a river of broken toys. Of course, the streets aren't the only thing breaking the news. All throughout the next day, crowds gawk at the burnt-out shell of Stonewall. And when the next night comes, they are joined by songwriters, poets, activists, and tourists washing down the street in a tide of exuberant energy. Allen Ginsberg notes on the way back that the guys there were so beautiful, they've lost that wounded look that fags all had ten years ago. An incredible sight. Burned out Stonewall Street. Also known as uh, Philadelphia after a football game. B a win. <laughs> Um, that's cool. I wonder how many people who never knew about Stonewall before before this mod. That that's one of the things I like about these alternate history mods and, and the base games too. Is even even the grand strategy games when they're not accurate, they they get people to learn about these events, which I find very fun. I think that that's great. Um, yeah, I just talked about Philadelphia. Uh, I just realized by the time this goes up, the Super Bowl should be approaching. So I wonder if Philadelphia is going to be in there. Because I remember the that year that Philadelphia won uh, the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Uh, I had had pre-recorded a series. And then I think it was the co-op campaign I did where um, where I was Ireland. And then um, Gurr was was uh, the United States of America and Kaiserreich. And we brought up, I think Philadelphia had been brought up. And I was saying like, oh yeah, Philadelphia's going to win. And there's going to be a riot. And yeah, uh... <laughs> Those wacky Philadelphians. They're not the only ones, though. Look up Denver after they won their Super Bowls back in the 90s. There we go. No, no, let's work with the Union. 
There is power, there is power, there is power in a union, the South African Union. Um, so what am I going to do about... Wait, what? Oh, no, economy tab. Right. I'm burning into my deficits, but it's going to take a very long time before it goes away. It's annual. We're, we're pretty good, all, all things considered. Um, yeah, we're just working on the infrastructure right now. What's going on in Russia? Uh, I think they're winning. Yeah, because they're pushing into Irtusk. So I think the Central Republic's winning. This is probably going to grind for quite a while. Oh my goodness, the Russian People's Union. Uh, authoritarian democracy. What happened? Did they just instantly swallow them? Was there some sort of event? What happened? Did I miss it? Did I not pay attention? I'm sorry. Mmm. Oh, but that's it for today. Dawn of a new day. We're going to read this in the next episode. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Conquering History Games. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.